Hi, John here. Welcome. Thanks for tuning in. If you're new, um, this video will all be about our January 2023 stats. If you're returning, this video will be about our January 2023 stats. Covering solar, battery, cars, uh, gas bill, electric bill, blah, 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 plus a few other bits and bobs that have been happening throughout the month of January. I had a look at the Met Office to see what they had to say about January and they're saying it was a month of two halves, although that didn't really affect us so much in Rushton. I don't know how you found in your area. But they did say that it was the second sunniest January on record in a series of data that goes back to 1919. Um, but it didn't pip the very, very sunny January of 2022, which we had. And this chart here shows you the sort of average sunshine and uh, we're sort of over there that little bit there to give you an indication of where we are um, we had very much varied weather um, rain which all then turned into snow this was the 16th of january uh, yeah it's quite a bit didn't settle and we had a lot of clear skies as well this was on the 22nd of january where we had some really cold crisp mornings which yeah did result in plenty of sunshine um, we had cake as well there's an update on our solar panels and uh, pigeons you can see there's a couple of pigeons which had started to roost under there and were about to nest i will be doing a separate video on that so i'll give you all an update on that rather than cover it here at the end of january the 31st of january we had the scaffolding installed and i'll cover in the february update what that was all about here's our schematic of our system which actually i'll need to update because uh, from the 1st of february it has changed a bit uh, but again i'll cover that in our february update so you can either pause this if you want to or all the information is down in the description down below underneath this video so let's have a look at the ripple energy Crag Faffa wind turbine as you can see there right top right hand corner went live in March 2022 and we have 1158 watts on the overall generation and we also have jigsaw which we're working on <laughs> this was uh, just before Christmas and this was taken today as I record this we also had 19th of February so we're, we're getting on it's quite tricky wind turbine is performing a little better than we are in our jigsaw completion for january we had a bill saving of 35 pounds and 41 pence that's broken down here and in a day by day chart the figures don't actually add up so if you added up all those savings rates um, per pence per kilowatt hour in that fourth column they don't actually add up to 35 pound 41 there's a difference between the generation which comes direct from the turbine which is what those figures are as against the one that's the actual one which they use and generally the actual one that's used after all of the data is crunched is um, normally a bit higher this is the same data set spread over a chart day by day we have the left hand column showing the price and or axes should i say not column and then the right hand axis showing the kilowatt hours generated and then this is from march 2022 right through to january 2023 with the monthly savings you can see january really did uh, come out proud in terms of top savings so far closer to home our solar generated 196 kilowatt hours this is again just the four kilowatt array because the second array was fixed on the 1st of february so from february onwards we'll be back to having two arrays and reporting on both arrays um, but still uh, 196 is good obviously not going to beat january 2022 because that was a bumper january um, but it's ahead of 2021 and uh, 2020 almost but remember that that is just the one solar array so if we'd had both arrays we would actually have had a really good january but you know hey ho ifs and buts and all that kind of thing this is a breakdown of the two arrays and you can quite clearly see there four months of zero on the 2.34 array nice to see that back up and running this is the split of 
the contribution of the power wall and solar to our overall self power for the house for the month of january 10 percent of our self power came from solar and 28 percent came from the battery so 38 percent self-powered in total for the month this chart which is the solar start and end times day by day for january 2023 you can see at the bottom there in the sort of blue color is the start of solar generation so it's creeping to earlier and earlier in the day and the trend line the dotted trend line there shows that reduction in time from later in the day towards the end of the month to earlier in the day and conversely the red is the end of the solar production each day and again that's trending to later and later in the day so all good news and then this chart is the sort of twin of that and that shows the peak generation in what hours and the time of day that generation occurred so you can see you're fairly consistent over the month in terms of peak generation over two kilowatts 2.2400 watts 2600 watts peaked at 2700 watts on the 26th and a few days of low generation of 500 watts and the time of peak generation is all around the same sort of time of uh, sort of lunchtime when the sun is at its highest looking back over january's over the last 12 years so january 2023 at 196 as you know but as we only have the single array we have to make do with it being the fourth highest that just gives you a flavor there of what's happened over the years this is the Tesla round trip efficiency. So what power we put in and what power we took out. So an 85% round trip efficiency. I noticed that the, the, um, the dates at the bottom of the chart uh, axes have all disappeared, but it's the last one you're looking at, the one that says JA. So 411 in and 349 out. This is the day by day for January. It really it <laughs> shows a difference that we are using quite a lot of house energy sort of 40 up to 60 kilowatt hours that'll be those blue spikes where we've charged one of the cars and by contrast the yellow bars which are the solar sink into insignificance and look quite um, sad on their own when you're comparing it against the house usage which means that that deficit will be picked up by import certainly using a lot of grid energy during january as you would expect that time of year and looking at the totals here 1.3 megawatt or 1300 kilowatt hours for house usage shown in blue yellow which is your solar and then input from the grid 1200 kilowatt hours export to the grid um, 12 which is good so we have used all that we've generated by and large with the exception of 12 that crept out so this is our daily average showing house usage in blue and then our grid usage in red so the house has come down to 43 on average daily usage from 50 in december and conversely the grid has also come down from 47 to 39 so that's trending the correct way this is our center of the grid if you remember it was 12 when we looked at the previous chart consistent on what we've done previously import from the grid 12.05 looking at previous january's is slightly more than what we would normally expect but again having one array down does make a hell of a difference in terms of what you need to import this is our eddy which heats our hot water from surplus solar uh, this is the month 19 kilowatt hours for the month giving the total of 1281 which is the cumulative since the installation this is the spreadsheet that I also keep. So installation date was on the 22nd of July, 2019. To date, based on our calculations there of our off-peak costs, we have saved 90 pounds and 63 pence. And it's fair to say that we're not great users of hot water. I've said this before in previous videos, we've got a 140 litre tank. There's only the two of us. Um, you know, we don't use massive of um, hot water. The Eddy will pay for itself with time, but um, yeah, it'll take a little bit more time. On to the cars, the Zappi um, didn't do very much in terms of offsetting solar to charge the cars. Just 8% or 20 
almost 22 kilowatt hours went into the car from solar the rest came from the grid a total of 266 kilowatt hours there we can look at that in a little bit more detail on this spreadsheet here the model 3 let's have a look at that first so charging at home on that was 176 kilowatt hours went in the model 3 is now on 29,751 miles so 741 miles during the month of january we did four supercharging sessions on public charging for 117 kilowatt hours at no cost and the zoe what did the zoe do um at home 90 kilowatt hours charging its mileage is 25,689 so it did 500 miles during the month no public charges for that this is our gas for the month so the billing period is slightly out of sync with the chart that i've got here so i'm showing you from the 1st of january to the 31st of january but our billing period runs from the 5th of January to the 4th of February so that's slightly out of sync but you get the general flavour. You can see on this chart where the cold snap was <laughs> around in the middle of the month and we're on the octopus gas tracker tariff. I'll just put this in there so you can see how the gas tracker rate has been moving over the course of the month. So an average rate there of 6.73 pence per kilowatt hour, right, showing right at the bottom there. So this is our gas usage, so 246 units, 2,715 kilowatt hours at that average rate. So 182 pound there, plus standing charge, so 190 pounds plus fat. So 200 pounds for a month of gas. This is the underlying spreadsheet that I keep. Uh, so you can have a look at that if you want to yeah, pause the video it just shows you the same data but then obviously some more historic data as well electricity wise again same period 1st of jan to the 31st and then this is the bill breakdown used mainly off peak 1171 kilowatt hours off peak at 7.85 pence per kilowatt hour bringing in 92 pounds 50 and 5 sorry 92 pounds 0.57 pence peak rate of 32 pounds 32 pence actually i always look at it pounds 32 pounds not 32 pounds 32 pence 0.79 so yeah bringing a bill total there 121 pounds and 99 pence for electricity and again subsequent spreadsheet which shows you historic data if you wanted to pause and have a look back through that but it's really the same data for the month with the highlighted grey line at the bottom there. So this is our bill in total. So gas and electric less our credits. So we've got two credits there for December and January are listed there plus the campaign award of 69 pence. So if we work all that out, it's um, a total of £322.20 for gas and electric. Minus 64.77, which is the credits, brings us a January bill of £257.43. And, and I'll leave you with a day by day of a breakdown of our octopus electricity bill. The majority of the use there is in off peak in the early hours of the morning, that block on the left hand side. And then now and again, we've crept into the right hand side where the battery has given up run out of charge so we've been pulling from the grid um there you go any questions give us a shout in the comments down below thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next video all right take care bye